Hey, welcome to Bethel Online. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching us today, it's by no accident. We believe that God has something just for you. Here at Bethel, we believe that when real people, people like you and me, encounter the real Jesus, real change happens. So our hope and prayer for you is that you have an encounter with Jesus today. We also believe that God has a next step for all of us to take. Today, your step may just be watching this week's message. It could be asking God to forgive you and finally putting your hope and trust and faith in Jesus for the first time. Maybe it's being baptized or beginning to read through the Bible, whatever it is. We want to help you take that next step. You can let us know what step you're taking by texting the word online to 765-433-2004. We would love to walk with you. During this season, God is teaching us to be flexible. It seems like every week there's a new challenge and more and more changes. A great way to stay up to date on all the changes that's happening at Bethel is to follow us on social media. It's also a great way to listen to current and past Sunday morning messages. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. You can find us on all these platforms by searching Bethel Putco. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. We know, we want you to know that you are wanted you are welcomed here, and that you are loved. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Good morning, Bethel. What's happening? Hey, I'm so glad you joined us this morning as we start a new series called Different. I believe that God calls us to be different. The scripture says that we were fearfully and wonderfully made, that we were made differently, made uniquely. It's interesting. One of the things that I know happens oftentimes in hospital when babies are born is that parents will look and do they have 10 fingers? Do they have 10 toes? Are they normal? And yet, for the first few years of life, as their personality starts to come alive, we celebrate that they're different. And if you're a parent of multiple children, you know that everybody's different. If you're a child in a family, you, you know that like you may not be just like your brothers and sisters. And we often celebrate those things. For instance, um, my oldest child is perfectly happy and content to spend some time by himself. Uh, my youngest child wants to be by her mama's side every single minute of every single day. And my middle son is perfectly glad to be with you, but be quiet. And it's interesting to me how they are all wired so uniquely and so amazingly. And I wish everyone maybe celebrated them the way that I do, because I think it's awesome. And I see parts of their mother in them and parts of me in their personality. And I see things that only God could have put in a place. And as a dad, I celebrate that. But one of the things that I look at in our culture is it feels like sometimes different gets lost in life. That we begin to settle rather than being made uniquely. And I'm not just talking about just being weird or different for the sake of being different. Because I see people out there that just specifically go and try to be so outlandish that they're considered weird or way out there, but, but that we should maybe celebrate that we're called to be different. We were made different, but something is supposed to set apart those who are following Jesus. And I wonder if an unbelieving world were to look at the believers of faith in our culture, if they would really see that we're any different or if our lives look the same. The early church turned their local communities upside down because there was something that set them apart. In, in the book of Matthew, the writer says, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. That there's a sameness a, a, a mindset of group think and thinking alike and doing everything alike that can lead us to destruction. And it takes very little thought 
to just follow what everyone else is doing. And I wonder, even though we teach our children that they're unique and incredible in their uniqueness, if sometimes we don't dampen their uniqueness by trying to make them experience sameness. It's let's put you through a cookie cutter and make you just like everyone else. And when we don't seem to feel that maybe they or we fit into the normal, rather than embracing the different that God has called us to, we often reject it when just maybe God's followers, the followers of Jesus, are actually supposed to be different. Now, I'm not endorsing to live a crazy, weird life just for the sake of living a crazy, weird life. I believe that our differences is born out of the difference that happens in us when we know Jesus. Matthew's telling the followers through the words of Jesus, Matthew is, is sharing with the followers of Jesus that Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate, that maybe thinking with the group may not be what we're supposed to do. That God calls us to think for ourselves with him in mind. In our culture right now, you can see the tide on either side of the political spectrum. You can see the tide in, in almost any environment you go to about any issue that there are only a handful of people doing the thinking and a whole lot of people doing the following. But Christ followers are supposed to be set apart and different because if we all are bearing the Holy Spirit of God in us, we will be called to live in a way that sets us apart. Not in a way maybe that makes the world look at us and say we don't want any part of that, but maybe in such a way that it's winsome to the people in the world who are living same. Maybe, just maybe the problem is we've been aiming for same, but same isn't working. And Matthew basically says that the road that most people travel leads to destruction. That the road that we will automatically go down and we will automatically default to will lead us down a road of destruction. This is why your mom and dad said things to you like, if everyone jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? Do you know why they said that? Because they wanted you set apart. They wanted you to think differently. And I believe God is calling now more than ever in history for his people to be set apart in the way that they live. And there are certain areas that God specifically has instructed us to be differently. He says, small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. That often we're called to a different, that not everyone else around us is living. I found that if you want what normal people have, do what normal people do. And if you want what few people have, do what few people do. You know, we often refer to ourselves as Christians. That term was initially intended to mean little Christs, like people who go out and live like Christ. And Christ was very different. Very different than the religious perspective of the day had put on God. Rather than eliminating people, rather than living relationships in a certain way, Jesus defied almost all of the social norms about relationships. When Jesus taught things like, love your enemy, bless those who persecute you, that was different. It was very different than the cultural norms of the day. Very frequently in his teaching, Jesus would say, you have heard this, but I tell you this. It was what set Jesus apart. It was what transformed the lives of the people that were living there. There was such an aura of religious behavior around the time of Jesus that it was interwoven into the entire culture and yet it had gotten twisted and the people were not actually looking any longer to God. They were looking to the religious 
rules of the day. So when Jesus came, he came to show himself and show God in the fullest way. He was very different. A lot of people missed the way of Jesus when Jesus accepted some really broken disciples. There were a lot of people that would have discounted Jesus because, after all, shouldn't he pick the brightest and the best and the smartest? Instead, he picked the rejects. He picked the messed up, the disqualified. Maybe we're called to be different in the way that Jesus was different. You see, different people don't think like normal people think. They don't think the same about their finances. They don't think the same about their relationships. They don't think the same about mistreatment. We are not called to think like everyone else. We were given a unique wiring. And those of us who follow Jesus have been given the Spirit of God within us. It's the thing that separates us from normal. It's the thing that our normal is to live a selfish existence looking out for us, looking out for our well-being, making sure we don't get advantage taken of, of us. But Jesus allowed himself to actually be killed upon the cross for the sake of other humans. It was different. The people of his day couldn't figure him out. They didn't understand him. He operated so differently, but the reality is he also, his different, drew different people to him. Don't think like normal people think because you're called to be different. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says this, Don't live any longer the way this world lives. You see, this infers that by nature we already tend to gravitate toward the way that everyone else lives. We tend to be herd animals. We tend to be like the cattle who, when they start wandering across a, a field, wander together without thinking about it that maybe one rogue animal can begin the entire herd moving one direction rather than them going in the path that God has for them. And there is some safety involved in being a part of the herd. But it says, don't live any longer, Paul instructs. Don't live any longer the way the, this world lives. Why is that? That for those of us who are following Jesus, who have received Jesus, received the Holy Spirit, we now have become aliens to where we live. We, this isn't our home. This is not the end-all, be-all for us. That we have an inheritance that goes far beyond this earth as the followers of Jesus. Don't live any longer the way the world lives. Have you ever thought about how if the world looked at us as those of us who follow Jesus, is there anything about us that looks any different than anyone else? I mean, if you're a person out in the world where the world's filled with conflict and a lack of values and, and, and all of these things, and you look at the church who claims to have the solution to all of the problems of this world, and it doesn't look any different, would you be drawn to it? He says, let your way of thinking be completely changed, meaning that some of the power to a different life while being given to us by the Holy Spirit is about our submission to doing different. It's difficult to do something different than everyone else is doing. That maybe the path that the world says is the right path for everyone else is not the path for you. I mean, don't we kind of have what we consider the normal pattern of life? I mean, you get to 16, you get your license, you get to 18, you graduate from high school, you go to, you, you go to college, you, you, you get a job, you get married, and there's kind of this path that we take. But maybe we need to boss, take a step and say, is that the solution for everyone? Is that the solution that God has called me to? Is it God calling me to maybe live differently? That maybe rather than living a life that's filled with consuming all the things that everyone else consumes, that maybe I decide 
my life is going to be set apart for the reason not just to be weird, but so people can see the transformation God has implanted in me. And we cannot show a difference in our life if we haven't allowed God to change the way we think. Do you realize that maybe not every thought you were taught about how life should go is actually how it was supposed to go? I remember a few years ago, my wife and I were sharing with someone that we had made a decision that we wanted to be debt free. We didn't want any more debt because scripture says that the wages of sin is death. And I remember a woman looking me in the face and say, well, you'll always have that. And though I didn't get to say it at the time, I would like to say now, no, you won't. It's not necessary and you don't have to. And maybe that's what God's calling you to and maybe it's not, but there was specifically a way that we wanted to be different. I've learned over the years that um, some live day by day in our culture and some live week by week and some live year by year and month by month financially and It really was a part of my heart to want to be generous and it was a part of my heart to want to be free to be generous and it was a part of my heart to to be able to think rather than day by day and month by month and week by week to think generationally about rather than living a life that is worried about me and what I have that maybe I can begin to think about the next generation. And I found that to be present in a lot of world changing, changing people is that They don't just consider their own comfort in this moment. They don't just consider what's good for them and feels great for them right now, but they consider what matters most. And Paul says here, let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you'll be able to test what God wants for you. That maybe your guidance for different comes out of letting God alter your way of thinking. Over the years in counseling, I've learned one of the truths of counseling is that counseling often reveals the lies that we hold most dear to our heart. And in order to heal, we often have to come to a place where we receive a truth different than the one we've grabbed onto. We live in a culture that says your value is what you have. Your value is your talent. The word of God says our value is in the one who saved us. He says you'll be able to test what God wants for you when you allow God to change your way of thinking. Maybe this week the prayer we need to pray is, God, how would you change my thoughts? God, is there a thought in me that needs to be different? That maybe I need to test that my value is what I do. I think so many uh, people in our culture think that what they do as a job is who they are. And it's why they invest their entire lives in things that maybe aren't the most important, that there are all these lies that we can take on. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you and you will agree that what he wants is right. Because what happens when you start to do things God's way, the rest of the world will see that you are different. And there's part of the world that will be drawn to your different. But there's also a part of the world that will not understand you're different because they're operating out of a different standard that maybe you don't have to accept some of the truths that are believed in our culture about relationships. He says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. I love that. Because I think so often, even though we tell our kids it's great for you to be different, don't think like everyone else. When they start to think like someone else, we get really nervous. And you know why I think that is? Because we're afraid of what others will do to them for their different, rather than knowing that what God can do through the difference he's created in them, through the unique calling he's given them, is unbelievable. He said, instead, instead of just acting without thinking, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. What we're looking at here is not a weird for the sake of being weird that just, I'm going to make myself be weird on the outside. It's allow God to make you different on the inside. 
to entertain the possibility and the idea and the willingness to accept that maybe God is setting us apart for a specific purpose in a specific time and place. You see, Jesus teaches you to think differently about how you use your time in a world that says the busier you are, the more important you are. Maybe we need to be a people who ascribe to occasional pattern of rest. That maybe in a world that says you have to be so busy you can barely breathe, maybe we need to stop buying into that lie and be a people that trust God to fill in our blanks. Maybe rather than thinking I have to do everything for everyone, we can begin to be a people who do something for someone and use our time and look at our time rather as, our, as seeing it as my time, as seeing it as time that God has given to me to, in, to, and entrusted me with to use. See, Jesus teaches you to think differently about time. He teaches you to think differently about money in a culture that says, what I have is mine. Maybe the truth is that everything I have is God's and I've been entrusted with it. In a culture that says um, money is the key to happiness, maybe we begin to believe and live as if money is a tool to, be, to help us be free and obedient to what God calls us to do. That maybe the way I manage it, that, that maybe rather than believing I have to stay in debt where I'm imprisoned to a bank every single day and every single week, and I don't have any flexibility to love sacrificially the way God calls me to do, maybe we begin to say that what I have in my hands is God's, and some of it is to be used for my life, but some of it is also to be used for his kingdom. Jesus teaches us to think differently about our time and our money and our relationships. In the world that teaches you that a relationship is about what you get out of another person, maybe you turn that on its head and begin to say, a relationship is an opportunity for me to show the Jesus in me to the person next to me. And maybe in a world that says, don't ever forget and don't ever forgive, maybe God's plan of forgiveness lived out next to us is the very thing that alters people's lives. When we show forgiveness that's inexplicable within our marriage, when we could walk it directly and head on into a split, we, maybe we walk back into relationship because we're willing to offer grace that's not deserved. That only happens when we begin to understand the grace shown to us. Maybe, maybe the world has a way that they say, hey, this is how uh, it goes, and this is the pattern of how a relationship goes. Maybe we look into what God says about relationships and submit to it and say, no, no, no. God's plan for my relationships goes the way that God says rather than the way that the world says. And maybe we'll look weird or odd or different, but maybe it's that different that offers hope to others. Jesus teaches you to think differently about sex. Maybe he, he teaches us to think differently about values in a world that says stuff is most important. Maybe Jesus says people are the object of his affection. Don't live like normal people live or you'll get what normal people have. Most parents don't want their kids to grow up and live a normal life. They want them to live an extraordinary life. And a life following Jesus will lead you to extraordinary places. Normal may lead to easy. But very few of the people that we celebrate cultural-wide when we talk about the great people in our culture, we don't celebrate their normal. We're not like, oh, he was amazing at fitting in. We celebrate what made them different. And maybe now more than ever in the world that we live in, Maybe different is exactly what we need. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, Peter is giving some instructions and he says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world. Now, 
They weren't really aliens and strangers in the world when they started out, but because they knew Jesus, he was instructing them that they were to be as if this wasn't their home, that this wasn't their homeland, that this wasn't their final destination. He says, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires. Do you know why he had to give this warning? Because he knew they had sinful desires, that their own natural path would not be the path that God had them. He said, these war against your soul, that these are destructive. These sinful desires, they're actually destructive. That you can wake up at the end of your life and realize I was called to be different, but I've really just been the same. That the reason that I made my decision about what I drove was that I paid attention to everyone else. The reason that I made a decision about my kids' education was I just wanted to be like everybody else. That the reason that we chose our habits and our hobbies and the things that we do on the weekend is because I was trying to be like other people rather than who God called me to be. He said, live such good lives among the pagans, those who don't believe, that they, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. That there's power in different. Power to not just impact the now, but to impact later. This entire message has reminded me of one of the most different people I've ever known. When I went to college, um, I went to college with a calling that I knew was different. But I got to college and I really just wanted to be the same. I wanted to do what college kids did and be who college kids are. And that's part of growing up. But my freshman year of college, I met a dude named Adrian. And Adrian is actually a missionary in the third world right now in an undisclosed location. Who's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. He could have lived a life of comfort here and lived a very normal existence. But he was already living differently when we were in college. That I would go out with my buddies and Adrian would be with us and Adrian wasn't the same. That his behavior on the weekend was impacted and informed by Jesus. And in a moment of my life that kind of came to a crossroads, he was there. And I began to see that everyone else around me was miserable felt like what they were going through was meaningless and didn't matter and i was searching for meaning and adrian's example to me told me that it was time for me to stop fitting in and start standing out by being different by allowing christ to first make me different that maybe the path for every other college kid i knew wasn't the path god had for me and it began a process that actually led me directly into meeting my wife. It led me directly where I would find some structure that allowed me to embrace the different about me, the way that I was made differently, the way that I was called specifically. How's God leading you away from normal into the God kind of different? See, I think a lot of parents look at their kids and celebrate they're different, but I know God does. Though you might hate a lot of who you are, you are loved by God, formed by God uniquely for a purpose, not to live exactly the same, but to be set apart. You're set apart by his kid. If you want that this morning, all you have to do is receive it because God has offered to you to be his child through his son, Jesus, who allows you to be transformed. How is God leading you away from the normal into the God way of different? Parents, if you really want your kids to live out their God-given purpose and to be different, maybe you should start allowing God to make you be different. If you really want your kids to not pick up on every peer pressure that is around them, maybe you should start thinking for yourself about how you're raising them, about how your priorities lie. 
If you want an extraordinary life, you have to live differently. And the one who can help you do it is Jesus. Be different in a good kind of way. I love you, Bethel, and have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages for Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give. With online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.